Hello everybody, Lockboy here, and welcome to the second episode of Road to Raid Ready. Today we're gonna look at what Timwick has been up to in the last two days, questing, beating, instancing, and all of the new changes he has made to his gear. So without further ado, let's get on with the trade point. Last time we checked with him, he had 58, and now he's all the way up to 63. We still have 19 to go, but I believe we made some good progress. I finished all of Central Gondor. I hadn't done uh, Lower Lebanon, Pilar Gear, and Pilar Gear epics, so I got three from there. I got one from the Ashes and Stars questline from Osgiliath, and also I finished a deed for Expert Hurler for the Javelin skills. So we've gone up, and now in, I'm in the middle of doing the Minas Tirith epics. As you can see, I'm in Book 4, Chapter 6 getting closer to entering uh, mid-battle Minas Tirith. Uh, I'm not really looking forward to that, it's a lot of running, but uh, it's all two quick trade points with Starlet Crystals that one cannot miss. We also made some progress on the dealing part, I increased my zeal by one, and I increased my innocence by one, although it has not been deeding day, I have not actually gone out to do the deeds with Accelerator, I just got them while questing for the trade points. But I wanted to show you guys, we got the trade duty bound. I didn't even realize how close I was, I believe while leveling in warp pants I had probably left over like a warg or two, and while doing the Ashes and Stars quest line and finding those damned rangers in Sgiliath, I stumbled on top of that, so that was something that came out of the crap ton of stuff I had to kill in Sgiliath. Progress with the five trade points and small amount of deeds. I've made significant increase when it comes to my allies. I used. I know it's not needed to get any trade points, and most people just skip it. But the East Gondor trade line actually gives a hell of a lot of good rewards. So, as you can see, I increased my DPS on my main weapon by using the Starlit Crystal from there. Also, I used the Starlit Crystal from the instance I made today, so I increased it by 2. Uh, I got the Crystal of Remembrance, which uh, was a very nice addition, so I can get that Persevere block rating on my legacy. It was the final piece of the puzzle that I was missing, and honestly, without it, my ally sort of feels incomplete with tanking. I wasn't having uh, too much fun trying to ask people to let me tank for them, or join any runs without being able to use the full skill set or the warden. Uh, also, as you can see, I got the true gem of the Rising Moon, the life of uh, no marker on the server. Getting them relics is quite slow and painful. But then something very nice happened. I was doing my daily with some wonderful people, and looting the chest, I actually got a Crystal of Remembrance from a Tier 1 Fornos. Like, how lucky is that? So that also concludes the seven legacies that I will use on my javelin. I added the might, as you can see, it's the lowest level, but uh, I'm working on it. I got a lot of allies leveling, gonna need to construct them for IXP. I also used all of my remaining marks because I ran out of medallions, so I couldn't get any noticeable relics to deconstruct and, get and refine. So I used all of my marks to purchase the 40,000. Uh, IXP runes from the skirmish camp and my sword I dare say is looking mighty fine. I still do need to go to Fangorn and do the Fangorn uh, quests and get to the title that I really want, the physical mastery one. Honestly, I don't really like running critical rating um, titles, mainly because Warden, once you actually get all of your gear and all of your tomes and everything, critical rating should linger at about 13 to 13.5 thousand on the warden, and uh, with a capy, which most of the time in a 6 man you will have, you're gonna get the cap crit rating in tank lines, so getting those two crit rating titles will not really do much for you. I saw some people running critical defense, but then again, as we talked in the last video, it's not that useful. So I, I, I choose to go with the Physical Master one, it helps me keep aggro a little better, and 
Sadly, we cannot use the light damage as minstrels can use. Those damn... Er, never mind, never mind. Uh, hopefully, someday, Turbine will make a title with light damage for us. That would be very neat, Turbine. Wink, wink. Also tried joining a good chunk of runs for the gear, and honestly, I don't believe there is much chance of gear dropping in SS tier 1, because I did about... 20 of it, and I got one critical reading essence and a couple of empowerment scrolls. So, but people will not invite me yet to SS tier 2 because it's mainly my allies are bad. Um, I do need to use that IXP, so I hopefully will be able to start getting into more pug runs for SS tier 2 challenge, and that's where I can get the first two pieces of my gear and the two pieces of the six-piece puzzle for my gear. Uh, apart from that, Tingwick has not done much. Um, I got Carving for level 100. I um, actually have this for a while, I just forgot to mention it in the last video. I used the Light-type damage with the Fizz Gambit power cost, mainly because when I do my rotation, I like to use this Gambit Builder as much as I can, uh, as compared to the Shield and the Sword mainly because the fist leaves a trailing dot and it far outweighs the low proc chance on the spear one for 5% light dot damage and the melee one. So that's actually all we've done so far. Uh, I hope by the end of tomorrow to have finished with all of the Minas Tirith epics, epic quests and get on to doing the other class deeds which are getting the books done, the level 39 books, getting the promotion points, and uh, I think after that I'm gonna delve into Moria and get the Moria trade point. So that that's all for today, uh, thank you for watching guys, and until next time.